It's great to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Are you excited to be here this morning? Come on. It's cold outside. It's perfect weather for sleeping in today, but you made it to church. Hallelujah. The first victory today has already been won. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Surely the Holy Spirit has awoken you from your nice bed and your comfortable pillow, and He has brought you to church today. And I don't want you to have any doubt that God has a purpose and a plan for you to be here today. He has a message especially for you here today. So I want to welcome you in the house of the Lord. Welcome to every visitor, every first timer, maybe it's your second or third time. Welcome here in the house of God on behalf of our pastors. Pastor Armand and Marisa, you're so welcome in the house of the Lord. And I would love to then just honor my pastors. Thank you, Pastor Armand. Thank you, Pastor Marisa, for this opportunity again to share the word with God. Thank you for your love and your care for me and my wife. You guys are truly awesome. Amen. So this morning, we're continuing with a powerful sermon series. Do you, get, do you guys like the image there? Do you like the images of rivers and, and living water? We started speaking last week about a river for every dry place in our lives. And we spoke of the pool of Siloam. Now let me tell you, as a, as a theological student, having studied theology and a pastor, you know, and in a sense, I call myself a theologian sometimes, right? But... I have never, never read about the Pool of Siloam in such a way as I did last week. It's those parts of the Bible where they talk about a festival and they return from the festival and you just skip right past it to the powerful stuff. And guess what? God come, came and shared something powerful to us. It just shows you the Bible is so rich. I was blessed last week with the Pool of Siloam and we spoke about our hearts and the condition of our lives and whether we are still full of the living water or have you become dry. Is there dry places in your life? Are there areas inside of you that is not filled with the living water? And the pool of Siloam was this place where, where the Jewish people went for their festival. They would get some water in their golden jars and take it to the temple as part of the festival and the Feast of Tabernacles. And they would pour it out with a great joy joy. Hallelujah. Remember, we said they had great joy. There was great noises, great sound. And it was powerful because the pool of Siloam ministered to the people. The pool of Siloam was the place where they received the water. And, and it resembles us because people will come to you and they will either drink from you or not drink from you, whether your pool is full or empty. And what is powerful is that these Jewish people, they were part of this festival, part of this tradition. And when they went and they poured out, and at the climax of the festival, Jesus said something very powerful. I'm going to read it to you again. He said, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and he shouted to the crowds. Jesus reached out to the crowds. He shouted to them and said, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And this morning, I want to talk to you about that word rivers. Have you noticed that the word says rivers in plural, which means there's more than one river flowing from the heart when the Holy Spirit ends, enters. When the Holy Spirit comes in, there is more than one river. And we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to look at four different rivers. Say with me, four rivers. Say to your neighbor, four rivers is easy to remember. It's easy, amen. Right? We're going to talk about these four rivers that I believe the Holy Spirit comes and He brings this river and it flows into you and it changes our very nature, our very character in every form. The first river then this morning is the river of eternal and abundant life. Say with me, the river of eternal. I'm going to tell your neighbor, neighbor, we have to pray. Hallelujah. Voices loud and high. Amen. The rivers of eternal and abundant life. I want to take you back to a story where Jesus, and we know the story well, Jesus was traveling with his disciples. They were traveling from town to town, and they passed the town of Samaria. In the, they were in Samaria, and they came by a well. 
at that moment, Jesus finds himself starting to talk with the Samaritan woman. And he starts to talk with this woman who comes there to receive water, to take care of her home, to take care of her family. And Jesus initiates a conversation with this woman who comes to the well. And I'm not going to go into depth about the story again this morning, but let me, let me tell you that this well represents represents the world. It represents everything else that we try to fill our lives with. It represents chasing after success. It represents chasing after accomplishments, things of this world, trying to fill an empty void inside of us that was meant to be filled by Jesus alone. And Jesus starts to talk to this woman. And when you look at this conversation, at the beginning, the woman does not clearly understand what Jesus is referring to. And Jesus doesn't beat around the bush. He gets straight to the serious stuff. She comes to get water, and Jesus says to her, If you will ask me for water, I will give you water that will make you to thirst never again. He doesn't understand at first. He says, Lord, you don't even have a bucket. And she's confused. But Jesus continues to talk to her, and he addresses the very deep need that she has within her life, the need that she wasn't even aware that she had within herself. Let me tell you, the world suffers from this need. People suffer from this need. We were made, let me say it, with a Jesus-shaped hole inside of us. There's a place in our hearts that can be filled and satisfied by Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. And Jesus addressed this, and many times as Christians, this is what we face as well. We love Jesus, we come to church, we spend time in God's presence, but still we try to fill the hunger and the thirst with other things, things that are not from God. And Jesus responds to the woman in the following way. He says to her, but those who drink the water I will give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Woman responds, please sir. Give me this water. Please give me this water. You see, when we come to Jesus and we come and we drink from the well that He talks about, when we talk, come and He fills us with the Holy Spirit, He fills us with abundant life. And we see this in the nature of this woman. The moment when she received the words from Jesus, when she was filled with the Holy Spirit, her very nature changed. She changed from the, the woman who had many husbands. She changed from the woman, the prostitute, the woman with a stigma behind her name to an evangelist, to a town. The living water changed her heart. There was an overflowing, abundant life. There was a joy like never before. This kind of water comes from Jesus alone. And when I worked on the scripture, I thought again about the pool of Siloam. And I realized that that is the second way in which we Christians sometimes get distracted. We fall into religion. You see, the religious people of the day, they were caught up under the religious law, under the Pharisees. And if you know some history, there was the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees. And they set out a bunch of rules for the people, the Jewish people, to follow in order for them to reach God. Amen. In order for them to reach atonement, for them to get saved. They got to that point, they, they went to the pool of Siloam, and they did this whole festival order, and I believe it was for them to come closer to God. It was a way for them to worship God, but they were still lacking. Amen. They went to the pool, but without, the, without Jesus, the pool is empty. Without Jesus, the pool has no power. The Pharisees came to the pool of Siloam, uh, not the Pharisees, the religious people, they came and they lived out the festival. They lived in these religious ways, but they still didn't reach towards God. And I found it beautiful that in the moment when it reached its climax, Jesus shouts out, come, I am the way. Come, I am the answer that you've been looking for. And how does this relate to us? Many times we do the same thing. We follow these good Christian lives. We have our good Sundays. We have our awesome prayer meetings and all these things. And we come this close to Jesus. We are like Martha. We are in the same house of Jesus. The presence of God is here Sunday by Sunday, but there is still something missing within us. We come to the pool of Siloam and we try to satisfy, but only Jesus can satisfy. We come to church and we see God's face, but we come with a religious heart. We come to live in a way to try to reach God in our own strength. Let me tell you, Jesus says to us, same as he said to the Samaritan woman, 
He says to us the same as He said to the religious people of the day. He says, come to me. Come and drink from the water that I give you. And God will give you the abundant life. The first river this morning speaks of the eternal and abundant life that God wants to flow in and through us. I want to ask you this morning, are you thirsty for God? Last week we said the only way that you will stop yourself from becoming dry is when you thirst for the Lord. This morning I want you to thirst for the river of abundance, the rivers of eternal life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. There is no religious act. There is no good acts. Sometimes we feel like we have to be good for a few weeks and then God will hear our prayers. Sometimes we feel that we have to live up to a standard before the Lord will hear our hearts. Let me tell you, we are nothing without Jesus. It is by the grace of Jesus. It is through Jesus that you can step into the holy place. It is through Jesus that you can get the living water and only through Jesus. You see, the religious people, they were religious. They were good Christians in the sense. And they did everything right. They followed the laws. They followed the festivals. They did everything right, but still couldn't get to God. They couldn't know God on a personal level the way that He wants us to know. You see, you can come to church week by week, still miss God. You can sit here in the worship and still miss God. You can sit here in the service, powerful services week by week, messages tailor-made for you. Hallelujah. God makes these messages tailor-made for every single one of you sitting here. And God says you can be here, but you can be like Martha, distracted. Jesus is in your house. There's an opportunity for you to sit and drink from the abundance. But we are distracted. We're good Christians like Martha, but we are distracted. This morning I want to encourage you to have a new thirst. To thirst for the, liver, the rivers of abundance.